Being a flight attendant in the early 1960s pretty much meant that you were female and under the age of 30. That's just how it was. Back then, you would be called a stewardess. 24-year-old Jill Kellogg had wanted to be one since she was quite young. Jill wanted to be a stewardess for international travel, for its exotic destinations and elite status. It was a glamorous, prestigious job, allowing one to travel to places that perhaps otherwise they would never see. Jill began looking for airline stewardess positions. She had dismissed her first consideration for employment, Transworld Airlines, because they didn't allow assignment of new stewardesses to international flights. Her selected airline, though, Pan American World Airways, did allow international assignments immediately following Stewardess Academy, and that closed the deal. Her first assignment would be one that she would never forget, and not only because of it being her first few days as part of a flight crew. The stewardess training regimen lasts only a month. In January 64, Jill sailed through the classes in personal appearance, meal and drink service, basic aircraft physics and aircraft mechanical principles, passenger safety and handling disruptive situations, and all other facets of the stewardess's job. In short order, she got her uniform and was qualified to be part of a flight crew. After completing her flight stewardess training, Jill had a welcomed two-day break before her first assignment. It was a flight from New York Kennedy to London Heathrow back to New York, and she was assigned to work the first-class cabin. The first leg on February 4th, New York to London, went well, and upon arrival at Heathrow Airport in London, the crew retired to the luxurious Kensington Hotel for the two-day layover before the return leg to New York. On the morning of the return flight, February 7th, she donned her uniform, met her fellow crew members in the hotel lobby, and boarded the transfer bus to the airport. Everything seemed normal at first. One of the first things that she noticed was that the company had added two additional stewardesses to this return flight. And that wasn't all. On the way to the airport, the first officer stood and addressed the rest of the crew. When she heard of the circumstances of the return leg, she felt a knot of anxiety growing in her stomach. The company had reconfigured the first-class section of the aircraft so that it now contained 36 seats instead of the usual 16. What was this? And it was her first flight assignment? All she could think of was, oh my God, what an enormous number of people for whom we would have to give A1 service. She found herself replaying the training exercises over and over in her head, trying to remember the particulars and also trying to block out her escalating panic. Jill's instinct was right about one thing. It was indeed an unusual flight, one that she would remember for the rest of her days. You see, Pan American World Airways Flight Number 101 on February 7, 1964 from London Heathrow to New York Kennedy, a Boeing 707-331 with registration number N704PA and named the Jet Clipper Defiant, included on the passenger list besides some other passengers, reporters, photographers, and members of the group entourage, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr, the Beatles, on their first trip to the United States for appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show. Up to this date, Jill had never heard of the Beatles, having been in a boarding school environment that kept her from absorbing much of popular culture. But the excitement surrounding the fans at the departure airport and that of the boys themselves was infectious. She wanted to talk with them, but her duty simply wouldn't allow any more than the standard request to be seated and clear the aisle so that food service could begin. Uh, by the way, hardcore Beatles fans, although I could find no documentation of it, she undoubtedly made several Scotch and Coke cocktails during the trip, as that concoction was the Beatles' preferred drink at the time. As the aircraft taxied to the terminal in New York, 
There were reportedly around 3,000 fans festooning the observation deck, although the number varies widely from source to source. The cabin door swung open and the screams of the crowd were deafening, making normal conversation impossible. So Jill Kellogg, the 24-year-old stewardess on her first trip with Pan American World Airways, bid farewell with a wave at the cabin door to whom would come to be known as the Fab Four and marveled at her first experience on the job and her tangential connection to the Beatles. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure to click that like button and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. This would also be a great time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And if you are already a channel subscriber, you might consider upgrading your subscription to channel member status because being a member will allow you to see videos like this days before they're available to anyone else on this planet or any other planet for that matter. Thanks again for watching.